Hey everyone, Joan here and welcome to my channel where I talk about minimalism, self-development and also I share my lifestyle. So today's video, I'm actually gonna do something kind of embarrassing for me, but hey, you know, this is how you overcome these things. But I'm going to share the things that I used to hoard and also the root causes of my hoarding. So I've been on my minimalism journey for about four or five years now, and it's just kind of crazy to think how far I've come, but also sometimes it still creeps up on me. So let's get started. I have a list here. All right, so this is something that I think most people go through, but uh, the thing that I used to hoard were clothes. And it wasn't like I was a shopaholic or anything, but I actually just collected a lot of clothing from other people. So I would buy some things for myself, but then I would also get hand-me-downs. And that's what happens when you have siblings. You get hand-me-downs and I have relatives who were shopaholics and they would shop for things that were on sale on clearance and when it turned out that it didn't fit them or they realized they didn't want it they would give it to me and i just grudgingly accepted it because you know i had this hard time saying no to things that were given to me so i definitely hoarded a lot of clothes clothes that i would never really pick out for myself you know i feel like growing up i just never really had my own sense of style because i was just taking clothes that other people would give me so i had a ton of clothes and I also hoarded a lot of bags which is the same reason why I had a lot of clothes were handbags uh, purses clutches for any kind of occasion and I wasn't even going out that much but I had a ton of handbags like again things that I would never purchase for myself and then I also had a lot of shoes and sandals again same reasons like I had this tub of shoes high heels sandals things that i would maybe wear once just to try it out but again never wore them and i just had a lot <laughs> and then the other thing was um, costume jewelry so i had a ton of costume jewelry things that maybe i did buy myself and things that i were i was given as gifts you know hand-me-downs and yeah i just had too much i mean I'm showing you a picture of my, my dresser that I had uh, five, six years ago. There is some costume jewelry on top of that. And later on, I'm gonna talk about that top drawer. But yeah, I had a lot of costume jewelry that I just eventually had to get rid of because I was never wearing them. I maybe picked out a handful of things, but I had way too much costume jewelry that I just felt really bad getting rid of. All right, so now I'm gonna go back in time a little bit. Um, what was this? What is this? Oh yes, okay, so I'm gonna go back in time from when I moved back home after college. And I graduated from college in like 2010, and for some reason, I kept all of my college notebooks, all of my notes, all my assignments, all of my papers that I wrote, because I had this idea that I'm gonna need it one day. You know, maybe I'm gonna become a college professor and I'm gonna have all these notes, I'm gonna have all this knowledge I'm gonna share, you know, as a college professor, which never happened. You know, I went through so many career changes throughout my adulthood, wanting to do this, wanting to do that, then not wanting to do this. And you know what, since 2010, I have not needed my notes from world music class. So I eventually got rid of all of that, but I had a stack and I don't even know why I did that. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in time a little bit more uh, through my middle school and teen years. So for some reason, it was really trendy to have magazines, right? And I don't know if any of you guys remember Seventeen magazine, and I think the other one was called Sassy. I can't, I can't remember. It's been so long. But every now and then when I'd go to the grocery store, with my family i would pick up a magazine and at the time it was like maybe three or four bucks for an edition and i would buy them and i would collect them throughout the years you know like i would just kind of flip through them you know do some cutouts decorate my my high school binder with cutouts from the magazine but i would keep them and i remember looking in my closet that I had a stack of magazines then I didn't even understood why at the time why I kept them like just I think it's because I bought them and there was just so much stuff in there so many like articles and like pictures that I really liked so I would just hoard all these magazines and it, they would just be shoved in my closet and I eventually got rid of it but yeah I used to hoard magazines so now we're gonna jump back to more recent times like maybe six seven years ago when I 
was living in LA, you know, I was already moved out of my parents' house like a couple years from that point on. Um, and I moved into this house that was renting in LA. But I remember having this huge shoe box of just stationary. So the box was like maybe uh, three by like three by two and then like maybe like this deep and all it had was stationary. So I had all kinds of thank you cards, different variations of thank you cards, all kinds of notepads, photo printing paper. And I didn't even have a printer that could print photos, you know, but I had photo printing paper for some reason. I don't even know why I had it, but I had that different kinds of drawing pads, different kinds of like colored papers, and then also different types of pens for like drawing stuff. I mean, there was a time I was a little bit more artistic and I used to draw and paint and stuff, but I had this huge box of just paper stationery and it was just sitting in the bottom of my closet at some corner and things would just pile up on top of it. Now I would just forget that it's there, but I had that huge box and don't know why I kept it. And then I had this other thing. I mean, this one's a little bit more understandable why I had this, but I had a small keepsake box. It was like kind of like a gold box um, that I kept a lot of letters and mail from since middle school and high school. So just a little bit of background. I grew up in Hawaii as a child. And then when we, my family moved from Hawaii to California, I was in middle school and my friends and I used to write letters to each other and we kept in touch and now that was before like internet and email became a thing and I used to write letters to my friends in Hawaii and they would write back and then throughout high school me and my friends in high school uh, we would write letters to each other during the summers because you know sometimes they'd go out of town or we just wouldn't see each other all summer long so we would write letters to each other so I kept all of that and I uh, did collect you know like birthday cards and christmas cards from friends and stuff like throughout college so i had this box that was just filling up with all of these letters but you know like thinking back like you know it's nice to keep and you kind of i did kind of read through them every now and then when i was bored because i was a teenager i didn't know what else to do and now it's like i don't need it i don't miss it i don't regret throwing it away because it's like at some point you're gonna have to just throw things out anyway you know like letters like why do you hold on to letters why do you hold on to mail and I mean to be honest I still do keep some of the more recent like greeting cards that we've gotten because my my in-laws they live in another country and so they're the only ones that really send me and my husband anything so we do keep those Maybe there'll be a time where we realize, okay, what do we do with these? But for now, we just have a small manageable stack of greeting cards. So the other thing that I had were boxes of CDs, DVDs, and vinyl records. Okay, first of all, CDs. <laughs> I just kept them because I had this idea. It's like, oh, I'm gonna upload them into iTunes so that way, you know, like I have them on my laptop. Did I ever get around to doing that? Not really. And I didn't even have a proper CD player. The only thing that played a CD at that time was my laptop. And I don't even have that laptop anymore. Uh, DVDs. Uh, funny enough, I did have a compact DVD player that I had from when I was living at home. Brought it over, but I don't even have a TV. Like, I have not had a TV at that house I lived in, but I had a DVD player that I couldn't plug into anything. So, I had those. Then vinyl records that someone just kind of handed to me because he thought, oh, she loves music, let me give it to her. And the vinyl record player. So I did use the vinyl records for a while. Then the needle broke on my vinyl record player and I never got around to replacing it. And so I had these two boxes of vinyls that I never listened to. So at some point I just gave them to my friend who listens to vinyls, then he sold them for me. Then he gave me the cash and he kept the ones he wanted to keep. And I was like, cool, you know, that got rid of that. The record player, I gave it to my roommate because he said he would fix it. So sadly, I did give the CDs and DVDs to my parents because they still listen to CDs and DVDs. So that box is at my parents' house, which I am a little bit guilty about giving them my hoard. <laughs> so, so that's that. Okay, so now this is the part where it starts to get really weird, okay? And I'm, this is the part where I'm really embarrassed. So remember the drawer, the chest of drawer that I showed you earlier with my costume jewelry sitting on top. So that top drawer, it's very narrow, right? There's not a lot of stuff you can fit in there, but that was my junk drawer. What did I keep in there? Okay, some normal stuff, right? Like pens, erasers, 
push pins, paper clips, but I had a ton. Like, I don't know why I had a ton of pens, had a bunch of erasers, push pins, and paper clips. The thing was, I wasn't even working from home at the time. So I don't know why I kept them, but I think I kept them because I had that idea that I'm gonna use it someday, that I need to keep things organized and I have all these things that I'm gonna write with these pens. And so I just kept them there. Um, then also there's like keychains, like people would just give me like souvenir keychains and I kept old keys from cars and like doorknobs that I don't even use anymore or have anymore. <laughs> and souvenirs from other people's trips. Okay, so this is something that starts to drive me nuts now is that, you know, I used to get souvenirs from relatives that would go out of town, out of the country, and they would bring back, you know, magnets and keychains and things like that that says the name of the place that they went that I've never been to. So it's like, okay, why are you giving me a magnet that says Ireland? I've never been to Ireland. I don't need a magnet that says Ireland because I've never been there. And so I've been really mindful that if I travel, I'm not gonna get people stuff like that because that's just weird, you know? Like, why are you gonna give me something of a place that I've never been to, you know? So I had a lot of those, okay? Uh, another thing was perfume samples. So. I don't even know why I ended up with these, but you know, like people would like just give me little perfume samples when they go, you know, shopping and stuff. It's like, here, Joe, like take this, you know, and it's like, oh, cool, maybe I'll try it. And so I had a bunch of little, little bottles of perfume samples in that drawer, which doesn't make sense because I have all this office stuff and then become souvenirs and now I have perfume samples stashed in that top drawer. And I also had coins from different countries. So, you know, when I would pay with cash, you know, I would be given like Canadian coins by mistake or like other kinds of coins by mistake. And I thought, oh, this is so cool. So I'll just keep it. So I had like this little like jar in that drawer that I just kept all these random foreign coins. I don't know why, like maybe in my mind, it's like, oh, maybe I'm gonna use this someday when I travel more, you know? So I had that. The last thing I'm gonna share is my junk box. So this junk box, um, it was just like a cardboard box that I kept in the top of my closet and it just had the most random things. And <laughs> I think I kept them because they were just fun memories and they just reminded me of my friendships, my friends and all the memories that we had together. So um, I had a bunch of $1 toys from Target and if you know that store Target, they have this one section that's got like dollar to $5 items, like right in the entrance, you know, you walk in. And my friends and I used to just buy each other random stuff whenever we would do retreats and like play shows together. And you know, we kind of made it this weird tradition that we would get each other gifts. So I had a lot of those. I even, somebody gave me a Skip It. Do you guys remember Skip It? It's that thing that you put around your ankle and then there's like a ball that you just, I was like 30 something years old and a friend of mine gave me one of those. Did I ever use it? No, but I shoved it in that junk box. Um, I had a lot of silly headbands, um, like rabbit headbands, uh, like little pom-pom, you know. So that's the kind of stuff my friends used to give me. Um, I had a <laughs> handful of Halloween costumes in that box, but specifically one, one costume. When I was, Playing these church retreats, for some reason, this whole thing about me looking like Pocahontas became a thing. So all my friends would give me Pocahontas costume stuff. My friends would just like, give me the, the outfit. And then the next year they gave me the necklace. And then the next year they gave me like the fake tat. So I would collect all the Pocahontas attire stuff in that box. So that's that. Um, I also had pet toys and accessories. Um, I didn't have a pet. I didn't have a pet living in that house in LA, but I had you know, my family dog, Joey, rest in peace. Um, I kept some pet accessories, like, you know, like water uh, bowls and stuff like that and toys and brushes because I always had this idea that one day he was gonna live with me. That never happened. He did visit a few times, but in that, like I had all this pet stuff for him and he never lived with me. So I just had it in that box. Uh, what else? I had flags. <laughs> I had American flags 
because when I became a US citizen some years ago, um, I threw a party and everybody got me American flags. So I kept a bunch of those in that box. And one of the most random thing in there was a light up eagle. <laughs> My roommate tried to celebrate with me and gave me the most random thing at that party, this eagle that lights up. I mean, it was pretty hilarious, but I kept it for a couple more years because I thought, oh, my friend gave this to me. How sweet. Oh, how funny. So it was in that box. And then I had like other random things I can't even remember anymore, but like I had things like backstage passes from like shows that I've played in the past. And like, you know, while that's cool to keep, I honestly just threw them away because it's like, well, you know, it's not happening anymore. Why do I need to hold on to just clutter? So those are all the things that I used to hoard. There are other things I will share at some point, um, especially like during my childhood and like even my high school years, like things that I've hoarded, but I'm, it's a little bit more sensitive to talk about because it does go deeper into like my past and like my family history and things like that. But these are the things that I used to hoard. And I think what it is, is that, you know, growing up, we didn't always have money. It wasn't always easy. You know, my family did have their struggles financially. So I think a lot of this had to do with having a scarcity mindset and just having ideas of money being a burden and just feeling like I have to own things. And I think that those were the root causes of my hoarding habits. And unfortunately it does creep up on me from time to time. I've been able to keep that under control um, nowadays, but sometimes it does creep up and I have to always check myself, always have to declutter and make sure I'm not hoarding things again. That is all the stuff that I used to hoard. Um, it is a little bit embarrassing to share, but Hey, this is how you overcome things, right? Sometimes you have to talk about it. You have to share, you have to just look back and accept what it is and then move forward, figure out what you're going to do from now on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching it. And I would love to hear your comments below. If you have anything that you've hoarded and why you hoarded it, I would love to hear your thoughts on this video. Anyway, hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.